Consuming enough protein is one of the basics when it comes to building a lean and aesthetic physique, but sometimes it can be taken too far. While we want to supply the body enough protein to fuel recovery and growth, it's also important that we maintain a balanced nutrition approach so that we can thrive in all areas of health. In this video, I will dive into detail on the science behind protein. You will learn all about how much protein your body needs to build muscle, what happens if you eat more protein, and why moderating your protein intake is in some cases beneficial. Let's first look into what protein actually is. Because protein is involved in more than just building your muscles, protein is what we know as a structural nutrient, so protein is involved in building tissues up in your body. Your skin, eyes, and even hair all contain protein. But we of course know protein for its important role in building up muscle tissue. And your muscles are literally made up of the molecule protein, also known as muscle proteins. A protein is made up of 21 amino acids, of which 9 are essential. These 9 essential amino acids cannot be produced by your body and therefore have to be obtained through your nutrition by eating protein-rich foods. So protein serves as the building blocks for your muscles and other bodily tissues. Now that we understand why we need protein in the first place, let's look into how much protein you should be consuming if maximizing muscle growth is your main objective. A common rule of thumb in bodybuilding is to consume 1 gram per pound of your body weight in protein. But if we look at the actual research, most people are able to consume less protein than that and still maximize muscle growth. A famous 2018 research review of 49 studies found that eating 0.7 grams per pound of your body weight was enough for maximizing muscle growth. A more recent 2022 study supports this by showing that consuming 0.7 grams per pound of your body weight in protein was also enough for maximizing strength gain. So if you have been struggling with consuming 1 gram per pound of your body weight in protein, you don't have to eat that much protein to make gains. You can scale back your protein intake towards 0.7 grams per pound of your body weight and do just fine. It's worth mentioning that the reference studies are mostly done on athletes within a healthy body fat percentage. For someone that is overweight or obese, basing your protein intake on total body weight can sometimes result in unrealistically high protein targets. So in this case, base your daily protein intake on your goal body weight instead of total body weight. You may be wondering, what happens if I want to eat more protein than 0.7 grams per pound of my body weight? And if I look at myself for instance, I quite enjoy eating protein-rich meals. I am originally from Morocco, and eating meals that contain chicken, meat, and dairy products have been staples while growing up. So I sometimes find myself going over the 0.7 gram per pound of your body weight target, and from a health perspective, this is okay up to a certain point. If we look at randomized controlled trials on high protein eating and general health effects, we see that a high protein intake is considered safe for individuals with no pre-existing health issues. In one study, eating a high protein intake had no negative impact on kidney function, a common concern with high protein eating. Another 2016 study had bodybuilders maintain a very high protein intake of between 1.2 and 1.5 grams per pound of their body weight for 12 months. No negative effect on any health marker was found. So for overall healthy individuals, there doesn't seem to be a significant health risk associated with maintaining an elevated protein intake. But there is more to consider and this brings us to the part of the video where I can discuss when eating more protein than needed can sometimes result in somewhat lower energy levels. Because as with anything, when you decide to eat a very high protein intake, there is an opportunity cost. We only have so many calories we can consume on a daily basis. Let's take the example of someone consuming a very high protein intake of 200 grams per day. This is 800 calories on a daily basis coming just from protein. If then you are also in the fat loss phase and maybe only have 2000 calories to work with, it will be tricky to also fit enough carbs and fats into your diet with such a high protein intake. And let us not underestimate the role carbohydrates and dietary fats play in your muscle building process. Carbohydrates help fuel your performance because muscle glycogen is a main fuel source during resistance training. If you already consume enough protein to maximize muscle growth, but then go ahead and restrict your carbs to eat even more protein, this can negatively impact your workout performance. Also, if you decide to compensate for the higher protein by eating less fat, this can have some unwanted side effects too. Dietary fat plays an important role in your hormonal health. Specifically, a low fat intake can negatively impact the levels of anabolic hormones like testosterone. Not to mention that we need dietary fat to absorb fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. My point here is that as people that lift weights, we definitely have increased protein needs, but eating more protein should not come at the expense of having balanced nutrition. You do not need ridiculously high protein intakes to maximize muscle growth. 
In fact, having a more moderate protein intake can indirectly help your training performance by allowing you to consume a wider variety of nutrients and better energize your body. This is why in my practice as an online coach, I like to typically stay within the guideline of 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your body weight as a general protein target. Of course, per individual, protein needs still can differ, so see this as a general guideline. I also would like to discuss another scenario in which having a very high protein intake can be problematic, and that is when you consider yourself to be a hard gainer. A hard gainer is someone that needs to eat very high calories for them to gain any weight. So these individuals typically have a so to speak faster metabolism. Because hard gainers need to eat more than the average individual to gain weight, they typically also have a much higher protein intake. As we discussed earlier, a very high protein intake is fine from a health perspective. But if you have a small appetite, then having a very high protein intake might hold you back in your muscle building process. Because multiple research reviews show that protein is generally more filling than carbohydrates or fats. Your body also burns more calories to digest and process protein. The higher satiety and higher thermic effect of protein make it more difficult to reach a significant calorie surplus to boost your muscle growth progress. Reducing your protein intake to an acceptable level like 0.7 grams per pound of your body weight and then increasing your carbs and fats can help you more easily achieve a calorie surplus if you consider yourself to be a hard gainer. So I hope the title of this video now makes more sense and you don't feel clickbaited into watching this video because there genuinely are instances in which eating more protein than necessary can make your nutrition process less effective. With that said, it's important to mention that there are still enough people that struggle with consuming enough protein and even reaching the 0.7 grams per pound of your body weight target can sometimes feel like a challenge. So let's not take this video as an excuse to eat less protein than you actually need. But I would like this video to get you to double check your protein intake and see if your protein goal still allows for balanced nutrition. I still recommend having protein centric meals as I have shown in my previous videos because protein rich foods are quite filling and should be part of a balanced diet. We just want to avoid the extremes here to give your body all the nutrients it needs. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have some practical takeaways on how much protein you can benefit from on a daily basis. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video.